current situation and progress towards the 2030 sexual reproductive health related sustainable development goals in Indonesia is systematic analysis. I welcome you all to this session and presentation. And at the same time, I recognize the other uh, authors of this presentation. Indonesia family planning program was considered a remarkable success story, which improved contraceptive prevalence rate from less than 5% in early 1970 to about 50% within the next 20 years. During the same period, total fertility rate reduced from 5.6 children to about three children. The BKKBN family planning program remains an exemplary for the low and middle income countries. However, there are concerns that the pace of progress in the family planning has been stalled in the country for the last two decades. The emergence of COVID-19 pandemic is likely to further disrupt family planning services and divert resources away from essential sexual and reproductive health care toward the COVID-19 response. We have examined the trends of family planning and reproductive health services in Indonesia based on the data from seven rounds of the Demogra Indonesia Demographic and Health Survey. And we also examined the prospects of SDG, Sustainable Development Goal 3.7, for achieving universal access to sexual and reproductive health care services, including for family planning. For the SDG 3.71 indicator, that is the proportion of women of reproductive age who have their need for family planning satisfied with modern method, we have examined the trends of modern contraceptive use, animated contraceptive use, and unmet need, and calculated the demand satisfied. And for SDG 3.72 indicator, adolescent fertility reduction, uh, we have examined the trends of age specific and total fertility rates. This graph shows the trends of contraceptive prevalence rates in Indonesia from 1991 to 2017. Currently, the last estimation in 2017 shows the contraceptive prevalence rate is 63.6% among married women using any contraceptive method and 57.2% a modern contraceptive method. If you look at the graph, the more pronounced contraceptive prevalence rate increase was in the early 1990s. And from 2002 to 2017, contraceptive progress has been almost stalled particularly uh, uh, the modern method. But very interestingly, the traditional method between the 2012 and 2017, essentially almost increased slightly over 50%, from 4% to 6.4% point percentage. The analysis of the trends in the contraceptive prevalence rate by education level shows that since 2002, the CPR, contraceptive prevalence rate, declined substantially among women with no education. The modern contraceptive method essentially also declined from 54.64% to 45.5%, almost 9% decline among women with the highest level of education. However, among them, the traditional method, contraceptive method, almost increased by the 3%, from 8.6% to 11.5 point percentage. There was a large difference, almost like a, um, a, a substantial difference in contraceptive prevalence inequality at the very beginning in around 1990s, early 1990s, but substantially that decline started and from 2000, you can see that the decrease has the urban, the rural area successfully eliminated any contraceptive inequality. And interestingly, in the rural area, contraceptive, moral contraceptive method is even slightly higher. Now, 
there is a substantial regional variations you can see from across all the regions in in um, it, in Indonesia. Some some regions have a substantially high traditional method. You can see that's eighteen point six percent, fifteen percent, ten percent, twelve percent. Large traditional method. On the other hand, many regions have a substantially low modern method. So overall contrastive prevalence method, although in many areas, almost like a 76%, but at the same time, there are some areas where the contrastive prevalence rate is almost like a half, almost like less than close to 40%. So this is a concern that this large variations are still existing in the modern contrastive method across Indonesia regions. A striking finding, I should say, is about the major concern, the substantial decline of the long-term, long-acting contraceptive use, especially of IUD. There is a substantial decline from 13.3% to 4.7% by the 2007 from the 1991. And you can see also the traditional method, uh, sorry, the um, long-term method has also declined and although that has been slightly increased from 10.9% to 13.5%. The use of implant is still uh, overall very low, 4.6% in 2002, and that is almost like a 3.9% in 2017. On the other hand, between 2012 and 2017, the use of injectable declined uh, almost like a 7%. But the traditional method, as you can see, that increased from the 4.1% to close to slightly over um, 10, slightly over 10% by the 2015, the 2017. The use of peel almost remained static, uh, close to 13% during the last two decades. Unmet need has almost like a, um, has, uh, it was unmet need of family planning remained almost unchanged from the 1997 to 2017. 13.6 was the 1997 and that has become now 12.5%. You can see the decline is almost negligible. Almost two thirds of the unmet needs are due to limiting future birth. That is unmet need for the limiting, which is 8.2%. About one third of the total unmet need, 4.4% is due to the spacing. The 4.4% and you can see that is a slight, almost like a half between the 8.6% in 1991 to 2017. Uh, and spacing, and this one is the limiting, you can see almost like a constant. The 8.4%, 8.2%, it is almost remaining the same. The demand satisfaction has been consistently very high, almost like more than 80% from 1994. The demand satisfied with the modern contraceptive method, which is the 3.71 SDG indicator, is high in Indonesia, with the rates consistently remaining over 80% for the almost last three decades. Demand satisfaction of the modern method remain high in all age group. We have not shown age here, but all age group has shown the similarly high uh, demand satisfaction percentages in Indonesia. Unmet need and the demand satisfaction by the un, uh, urban rural resident in Indonesia shows that unmet need is higher and demand satisfied is lower in the urban areas. And as you can see also that unmet need, there is virtually no differences in the unmet need between the urban and rural areas between 1997 and 2017. So almost like the last 30 years. On the other hand, demand satisfaction is, is lower in the urban area and um, on the other hand, the, the rural area 
demand satisfaction is slightly higher. So this is a substantially paradox finding, and this really suggests the need to examine urban disadvantages, especially among the slums and disadvantaged population. The why demand satisfaction is lower in urban area in Indonesia. And as we have seen, the contrast with substantial contrast variation in in the regions, and similarly with substantial variations in the unmet need and demand satisfied with the modern method by the region. A major concern is also the very high unmet need in many of the regions, close to 30 percent, and you can see that uh, uh, in many regions this is a much higher uh, than the average. Uh, unmet need of uh, in Indonesia. You can see the many regions have almost like a more than 15% uh, uh, unmet need in uh, Indonesia. And similarly, we see in, in some regions, it is close to 60%. On the other hand, in some region, this is almost like a more than 80%, more than 80% in, in many regions. So particularly Indonesia needs to look at uh, the regions where unmet need is still very high and demand satisfaction level is still substantially low. A primary concern is also when you look at the regions for not using a contrastive method over the regions, over the period, and we find that the lack of access in 2017 become a major reason for not using a contraceptive method, which was essentially non-existent in the previous round. In the previous round, although these were all non-existent, this has become a major concern. So we have to find out why in 2017, the, uh, the lack of access become a major reason for uh, women not using a contraceptive method. And this finding has been consistent across educational group, across uh, economic status in all uh, socioeconomic status wealth variables. When you look at the total fertility rate during the 2012 and 2017, TFR reduced slightly from 2.6% 2.6 children to 2.4 children at the annual rate of change of 1.6%. The government targets to reduce the TFR to 2.1 by 2025 and more than half of the regions you can see that the range of the, that the, uh, the median one or the national level is 2.4, median is 2.4, but many regions, particularly here, you can see that uh, TFR is still very high. Mm -hmm. Half of the regions have the TFR greater than 2.5 children. And age specific fertility rate reduced consistently among adolescents aged 15 to 19 from 51 births per thousand women in 2007 to 36 point 2017 data notion shown here. And the risk of regression from the progression in the SRH, although the progression has been stalled, there is a major concern now that the emergence of the COVID-19 will further stall or further uh, affect the progression of the sexual and reproductive health in, in um, Indonesia. In the face of the COVID-19, there is a concern that the RH services may be considered non-essential and divert resources toward the COVID-19 responses. Services disruptions, stockouts, and lockdowns are expected to significantly impact SRH services availability, access, and utilization. Although very limited data are available from Indonesia and not uh, publicly available, uh, early projections from the Gottmecker Institute warned that 10% reduction in access to short and long-term reversible contraceptive would result in additional 49 million women with an unmet need for the modern contraception and additional 15 million unintended pregnancies along with the limited access to the safe abortion will occur globally. So that really implies that the GOPID will have a substantial impact on the sexual reproductive health. The United Nations uh, UNAP program projected that just three months of the lockdown could result in 30, 30 to 44 million women losing access to modern contraceptive methods. 
Mary Estes International cited data that 1.9 million women and girls lost access to the contraception and safe abortion services during the first half of the 2020 when uh, COVID emerged in 37 countries as a result of the COVID. Data from India's HAMIS suggests substantial decline of the contraceptive methods used and safe abortion. Nigeria reported more than 10% to 15% decrease in the family planning services. In Uganda, 15% of health personnel were reassigned to COVID-19 activities. At this above of the 27% decline in the clients for the family planning services. In Kenya, 10% decline in family planning services. In the USA even, about one fifth of the physician offices stopped contraception services. So this implies, these studies really imply, observations imply that the COVID-19 will have a substantial impact on uh, sexual and reproductive services, including in Indonesia. Indonesia is one of the countries that was included in the WHO Pulse Survey, which revealed that that was uh, which conducted 105 countries. The 90% have experienced health services disruption as a result of the pandemic. And one of the most frequently disrupted services was family planning. In the next slide, as you can see, the family planning and contraceptive support at 44 countries. This is the highest affected area of all the disruptions for the family planning and contraception. And the 44% of the countries have affected. And some of this have the 50% disrupted within the country and the 20, 20 to 50% disruption of the function in almost like 40% of the country and five to 20% uh, disruption in the 25% of the country. So this really implies again, the family planning and contraception, the sexual and reproductive health will be most affected by family planning, uh, this COVID disruption. So overall paradoxically contraceptive use is lower among the educated and urban, uh, urban women in Indonesia. The program needs to examine the urban disadvantages uh, due to the disadvantaged slum populations and the substitution of abortion among economical advantage and educated women in urban settings to understand the reasons for seemingly paradox findings in the urban areas. There is a programmatic need to examine the reasons for the decline of long-term methods used in Indonesia, and the family planning program must strive to improve the use of the long-term reversible and non-reversible methods in the country. There are wide variabilities in the contraceptive use, unmet need in the demand satisfaction, a demand satisfied that with the regions. There is an urgent need to understand the programmatic, cultural, and social factors for such disparities across the regions, utilizing the both facilities and population level data. And it is important also to document the impact of the COVID-19 that would have on the sexual reproductive health and maternal and child that is intricately related with that addressing the the challenges. The country must try to utilize all the available resources to document the impact of the COVID-19 so that the country can appropriately address the challenges and mitigate those impacts in, in sexual and reproductive health. Thank you for listening.